Oh, man, it seems like it's that time again. It's Player Talk Radio. We got another tech show on the way. Let's get into today's tech talk. It's Player Talk Radio. Let's get it. Let's go. To Player Talk Radio with DJ Kuda, the hottest DJ in the manosphere. Let's get it. What's going on, y'all? It's DJ Kuda right back at the helm of today's show. Got a great show for you guys today. On today's show, man, we're going to be talking about how to stream your video games and how to basically, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, kind of work the green screen a little bit and basically, you know, get into some real game when it comes down to high value microphones. So on today's show, we got a great show for you guys today. Welcome to my tech talk. Obviously, my light is not the best light that I have right here. See how it does that? So we're going to get into the game on today's show. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. So stay tuned. It's Player Talk Radio. Thank you guys for joining me on today's tech talk. We're going to get into some real good games. So what I would like you to do is hit the cash app right here, basically to support the channel. And basically, uh, what I need you guys to do is check the links in the description box where I will have these items listed there. And I will have some really good, you know, some really good info down in the description box. So make sure you guys check the description box because it's lit in the description box, man. Thank you guys for coming out to today's show. Thank you guys for sticking with me on, uh, you know, on this, you know, tech talk. So listen. A lot of people hit me up and they're like, hey, man, you know, I want to definitely start my gaming channel, but I don't know what to do and I don't know where to start. And also, I want to be on the screen while I'm actually playing the video games like, you know, uh, well, I do the exact same thing. I, You know, I get on the screen and play video games and stuff like that. It's the winter time. You know what I'm saying? Uh, new games are coming out. Y'all probably pre-ordered the PS5. Or the xbox so you know a lot of guys are going to be really into trying to get their video game streams up and you know it's just a it's just a lot of things that may go into the process of you you know starting your uh you know your video gaming journey when it comes down to you streaming your video games this winter so definitely i want you guys to take heed make sure you take notes and make sure you support the channel so let's get into it so what you're going to need is you're going to need a green screen. Number one, green screens are really good, but I made sure that mine is not well lit on today's show because honestly, I need to get a light over here and I need to, you know, make sure I, uh, you know, have my light really, you know, uh, you know, on the right spots when it comes down to, you know, on the green screen main thing you need to do when you're getting a green screen is have your lighting correctly because you don't want to cast a shadow the reason why you can see a lot of these things right here is because my lighting isn't correct and it's casting a shadow see that so what you want to do is you want to get a green screen to cover your background and what you want to do is you want to get some good like some good lighting to cast a shadow you can use a lamp if you can as long as you get it close to your green screen so that you don't cast a shadow. Now I got this big fog light. I don't have it in the correct position. So my green screen. You can damn near see it. Right. So this is a great example for you guys. To make sure you get you a green screen. <clears throat> and you learn how to use chroma key. Chroma key is what's going to key everything out. And that's how you get your backgrounds. And stuff like that. Your video game. Uh, you know. Uh, streaming system should come with chroma key. So that way, if you have yourself a nice camera and you got your green screen, you can key yourself out and the video game's background will be your background. So that's how you do that trick. Number two, you want to have a gaming console. It is the winter time. So, you know, some of you guys may have 
got the PS5. Some of you guys may, uh, you know, may got the new Xbox. Some of you guys may, you know, have, you know, gotten a whole bunch of, you know, you know, different, you know, gaming systems that has is coming out, I guess, this November, which is next month. Well, which is in a couple of days. Tomorrow's Halloween. So make sure you guys like and support the channel. Make sure you guys definitely hit the description box. So what you're going to need is your gaming system. Uh, you need a television. Uh, you need your computer. And you need one of these. Now, what this is, is this is a capture card. Now, obviously, you have bigger capture cards. Obviously, you know, um, you have other capture cards that can do different things. Some capture cards have a, a you know, a, a 4K pass through. Some capture cards are more smarter than, the, uh, than the, uh, you know, than the other ones. But the best capture card that I find to be really good that's on the market and which you can get down in the description box by hitting the link is the Elgato HD 60S. I really like this capture card. This is actually my favorite capture card. Really dope sleek capture card had it for a while and um it's just a really nice capture card you know you just plug it in and you really don't you really don't touch it i really haven't touched mine this is like really the first time i'm really touching it honestly since you know, when i really bought it so um what this capture card does is it captures your video game footage and it sends it to your computer by via usb c to usb a now a lot of really uh you know uh really like uh really serious equipment now are starting to use usb c but the great thing about this capture card is that it goes from usb c to usb a so right here you have your usb c port you have your hdmi in and you have your uh, your headphone port because some people they plug their headphones into it just to hear the audio that it produces. So this is going to produce your audio and your video. So what you need to do when you're uh, when you're using these uh, capture cards is you need to get an HDMI cord. You need about two HDMI cords, and this is how you're going to hook it up. You're going to hook the HDMI in right here from your gaming console into your capture card. And you're going to take your USB-C, you know, cable that it comes with, and you're going to hook that into your computer. So that is sending everything that your, your console is sending into this capture card into your, your, your computer. That's why you're going to hook your USB-C right here into your computer. Uh, it's going to go from USB-C here to USB A and that's what you're going to hook into your computer and your computer should pick it up and it should, you know, display what's going on coming from your gaming system. Also on the back right here, you have a USB, not a USB, you have an HDMI out and you want to take this HDMI out and you want to hook it either into your TV or you can hook it into a monitor or, you know, wherever else, you know, other screen that you're going to be, you know, uh, streaming your video game. Or some people, they hook it into their computer also because they're going to be watching their stream on their computer. But you can watch your stream on your computer by hooking this USB-C to USB-A. Now, it comes with software where you can stream, but if you're going into, if you're using like OBS, then you're going to have a little bit of a problem. Now, this HD60S is really good for PC, okay? I learned this the hard way. This is some rare information that I'm giving you. Listen, if you're using a Apple or a Mac, they do not have a port. They do not have any fix for this problem. I ran into this problem because I switched from PC to Mac. If you're using a PC... This is perfect for your PC because this will stream 1080p 60fps, which is really good, and which most streaming services, that's their that's their max. That's what they max out at. Now, going into this new age where you have the PS5 and the new Xbox that's coming out, 
what's going to happen is, you know, they're going to start, people are going to start streaming in 4K more. 4K is going to start to become, you know, the, you know, standard, you know, uh, you know, basically the standard, really, if it already isn't now. But most services, they don't support 4K because it takes up a lot of, I guess, bandwidth or it takes up a lot of, you know, um, CPU usage and stuff to really, you know, project it and run it and stuff like that. But there is an alternative for that, okay? When you're using an Apple, what you will have to do to run something like this is you will have to, because you cannot run this, this is not going to just run just straight off your Apple the way you think it's going to run. Sometimes you're going to have some problems with it, especially if you're using OBS or Streamlabs OBS. So you will have to download what's called an NDI source. And the NDI source is basically another streaming service is another it's another uh it's another software that communicates with this and then it sends it to your computer. The bad thing about that is that it can cause lag or sometimes your frame rate might be off because this communicating with that communicating with your computer does take a good amount of time. So what will happen is if you use this and you're you're on an Apple and you don't have the NDI source, you might experience lag. Or even if you have the NDI source, you might experience a little bit of lagging. Also, your audio might be off when it comes down to, you know, your um your 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 gaming. And that's terrible because you don't want to capture that. And that's embarrassing and shit like that. So you don't really wanna use something like this and put yourself at a disadvantage. So that's what was going on with a lot of my streams. Uh, Apple does not have a fix for it yet. So your best bet, if you do have an Elgato HD60S that streams in 1080p, 60fps, frames per second, you will have to get an NDI source and get it popping with that. Now also, the best thing you can do is do what I did. I went out and ordered another capture card. So while the Elgato HD60S is my favorite capture card, but transferring over from PC to Apple is a pretty daunting task, I went out and got an HD60S. Now you have your USB cord to USB C. See that? Like I said, you know, more more uh heavy like more serious equipment are running off of USB C. Aside from 4K, that's gonna be the standard. Now, got me another capture card. Now, these capture cards look identical. Right? They look identical. Look identical, right? Look identical. But this is not a regular HD60S. This is an HD60S Plus. And see the difference? This one is an S Plus. This one is an S. Now, this one, which is the S Plus, has a uh you know a a extra chip in it also that the HD60S doesn't have which makes it easier for your computer to pick it up as a camera source a lot of people went out and bought the cam link uh which I will show you guys I will do a video on these uh capture cards and I will do a video on the cam link but a lot of times uh you know people were having problems you know, obtaining a cam link, you know, it's really hard to obtain the cam link or the cam link is expensive. And what they were doing to capture their camera source was use this because this actually has a port for it. So you can even capture your cam, your, your, uh, you know, your, you could, you could plug your camera into it via the, uh, H, uh, the HDMI cord. You could plug it, uh, into, you know, your camera into it and it will capture your footage in 4k. So 
while they look identical, my bad, y'all, uh, you know, one does 1080p, 60 FPS, one does 4K, 60 FPS. That's a big bump. And that's really good because, you know, this helps, uh, this gives you uh, 4K streaming, and this also gives you, you know, uh, gives your camera and your, uh, you know, your setup, you know, 4K, so you don't have to even go get the cam link. So you can either use this for video games or you can use this for your camera. Now, the reason why you want that feature, especially if you're using a Mac or, you know what I'm saying, or, or even a PC, uh, it makes it easier to detect your, uh, your, your capture card. And now you don't have to download the NDI source to capture your video game. You don't have to have the extra party uh, in, 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 you know, your chain of command when it comes down to streaming your video game and capturing your video game in OBS or even the software that it comes with because it makes it more easier for your computer to pick it up and it does the rest of the work for you. So I'm not saying that the HD60S is a bad, uh, is a bad um, you know, choice, but if you're doing Apple, you want to get the HD 60S Plus, which could cost a little bit more, but it's actually pretty good. If you want to stream uh, your game in 4K, this is the one you need. If you want to have your, uh, you know, your camera footage and everything in 4K, this is what you need. So this is a great, uh, this is a great tool for you guys to use for your streaming, the Elgato HD 60S. So both of these capture cards will be down in the description box down below. Make sure you guys hit those links. Make sure you go get you a capture card so you can capture your video gaming really good. Also, if you're going to get a PS5 or an Xbox Scarlet, you definitely want to do this because this just eliminates all the hoo-hahs and the hoop flaws and the whatever they call that shit. But anyway... These are some really good capture cards. Make sure you have them laying around your studio, especially if you're doing video gaming. Also, like I said, you know, they come, it comes with a, you know, HDMI out. You get your, you know, your, your, your USB-C, you get your headphones in and you got your, uh, well, you have your HDMI in and you have your HDMI out. Very identical, but two different capture cards. You dig? Gotcha. HD, HD 60S Plus or the HD 60S. Okay? So, thank you guys. Now, thank you guys for joining me on today's show. Let me show you guys some real nice shit. Now, my favorite company, as you guys know, and shout out to Electro Voice. I know, uh, you know, um, I'm using a more brighter microphone on today's show. But I want to show you something. This is why I use my Electro Voice on today's show. This microphone here is the Electro Voice RE320. One of my favorite microphones because it's character. If you listen to the microphone, the microphone is more bright. It's a broadcasting mic, but you hear more top end. It's more brighter. And I got another uh, part two to today's tech show to show you guys. So I'm giving you guys a lot of free game. Make sure you hit this cash app. Let me show you something. Okay, so I want to uh, get into the game right now and show y'all something really cool, which is really special. Now... Podcasting has become something very, you know, uh, very unique and very big. You know what I'm saying? Um, podcasting, uh, you know, there's like, what, 30,000 new podcasters every month um, that are literally, you know, coming out of nowhere. So, you know, um, you know, it's... Safe to say that you would need uh, podcasting equipment. You would need a uh, a good mic, you know, to um, 
to basically record your shows, um, well, to record your audio. Here in the Manosphere, um, I've been pushing a mic that's been around for a long time. But let's get into the game. So check this out. I want to show y'all something pretty cool. Now, as you guys know, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm not too much of a fan of USB mics. I love XLR mics. This microphone right here. God damn. This is, this is let you know I don't use it. Is the Blue Yeti. Now, nine times out of ten, if you're a podcaster... You've seen this mic before. It's damn near in everybody's uh, studio. Uh, a lot of people use it. And it's not that I don't like this mic. It's just that this mic is overkill. A lot of people use this mic for everything. You know, ASMR videos, uh, just all kinds of different things, you know. And this is a really good mic, you know. It's a really good, you know, daily driver. Really uh, beautiful mic. This is the Blue Yeti. If you want to buy one and disobey me, you can find that down in the description box. So this mic agitated me. This, you know, we're going to talk about high value mics right now. OK, we're going to get into, you know, the high value mic segment. OK, so this mic right here, I'm going to show you a very high value mic. A lot of people, they get hip to this mic because they believe that this mic, you know, is like, you know, standard, you know, recording equipment. And to some people it is, but this is not serious recording equipment. Now, if you're uh, video gaming and stuff like that, yeah, cool. You know, you can get one of these. But if you really want to step your game up to the next level, I'm going to show you a couple of mics that you can get. Now, this mic right here is a USB mic, which is a plug and play mic. No different than those capture cards that I show you where you plug the mic in right here via USB and it goes to a USB A and it plugs directly into your computer and you can plug your headphones into here to monitor the sound and everything. If you notice this mic right here does not come with any notches. I mean not notches but like any, you know, any type of like you have to play it by ear with whatever headphones that you have and this might not be the great, you know, this might not be a great uh, you know, uh a great option for you. When you're like, you know, trying to gain stage this microphone and the sound is not, you know, it's not analog, you know, it's it's more of a digital sound. OK, also these mics that they come out with that are USB mics, they're uh, condenser mics, which are really good for picking up your voice and everything. But the bad thing about them is that they pick up everything in the room including the echoes like from your voice bouncing off the wall it picks up everything you know uh uh people in the next room this mic picks up a whole bunch of different things so to properly run this mic you most definitely will have to have a semi sound treated room or have your gain turned down and really be talking into it another thing that agitates me about people that use this mic is that they turn it downwards like it's a broadcasting mic this is not a broadcasting mic this is a front address mic you got to talk into the front of this mic because the the capsule is facing upwards right here okay also this mic has a very noisy mute button okay so i will be doing some more uh tutorials on this mic but this is a pretty versatile mic and if you're if you know what you're doing sound wise you can definitely get a great sound out of this mic but for the average person getting into podcasting this is not a good mic to be introduced into podcasting because this mic can definitely curve your experience when it comes down to you upgrading to another mic or going to xlr or believing that all the other mics are going to sound the exact same as this mic okay and also you might have a hard time trying to tr sound treat your room because this mic picks up everything so that's my gripe on the yeti and 
what uh, a lot of uh, companies have been doing, especially, uh, you know, El Gato, uh, they've been releasing a lot of podcasting mics because a lot of people are gaming. And at the same time, a lot of people are podcasting. And the cool thing about like XLR is that, you know, you get you get more control of your sound. You get to control a lot of different things that, you know, that you have going on sound wise when it comes down to, you know, your microphones. So the funny thing is that you're using a lot of mics that's been around for a long time in 2020 for podcasting, which is actually kind of very dope when I get into what I want to talk about. Now, I have another mic right here that's coming from the ceiling. This microphone right here, which I need to clean. Oh, shit. Which I need to clean is the Elgato Wave 3. Now, this is a pretty cool mic. Um, it's a USB-C mic. And you have your headphone jack right here and your USB-C. This mic is pretty cool. Um, uh, one of my favorite companies called Lewitt. They help, you know, make this microphone. There's a fly in here somewhere. Oh, fuck it. I need to close that window. So this USB microphone is pretty good. It's still a condenser mic. It's going to pick up everything in your room. But the good thing about this microphone is that it comes with software where you can actually, you know, uh, you know, you can you can fine tune it so that it doesn't pick up everything in your room and it picks up your voice. Also, this mic has a limiter. So when somebody's whipping your ass in 2K or something and you want to be loud and you want to rage quit, you can do that. So the good part about this mic is that it comes with software. You can gain stage it and everything. This is how a USB mic is supposed to be done. This Elgato Wave 3 is how a USB mic is supposed to be done. Not the Blue Yeti. Okay? Now, if you want to uh, help curve and learn how to use your Blue Yeti, you can come check me out on Patreon. Or maybe if I do something on OnlyFans or something. I can't let y'all see my eyes when I do that. Right? You can go over there and I can show you how to use Voice Meter Banana or voice meter potato so you can get a better sound out of that mic now this is a front address mic you don't talk into the top of this mic on the top of this mic you have a mute button which is cool that is uh you know that you can just touch and you know you can you can basically mute your mic by the touch of that that is better than hearing the clicking noise of this mic see You hear that clicking noise. Okay. So. It's a little bit hard nowadays to acquire gear. Um, another mic that Elgato released. Is this microphone right here, which is basically the same as this one. And it comes with the stand, which you don't really want to use because, you know, you don't want to hunch over and stand unless you got a table that's like, you know right side up and you can use it and this is the wave one okay i'm backwards y'all i don't know why i have the wave one plugged in and i don't have this one plugged in if you want to monitor your uh you know your volume and stuff you can use this notch right here and you can click it right here and right here is uh is like the different modes so on these different modes you got your headphone volume you got your uh you know your monitor versus your game volume and you got your, uh, you know, your mic volume for your game. Okay. So this microphone is built for video gaming and podcasting. Also, it comes with software that you can pair with your HD60S called Wavelink, which is the software that actually comes with the microphone. And you can pair it with, you know, your Elgato. I just, I'm just Elgato down, man. I got the ring light and everything. You can pair it with your Elgato Stream Deck. So this is also a great alternative for you to get. And I need to blow this shit off because, you know, I got a lot of dust in my studio because I, I leave shit where it is. Right. Right. But if you can't afford uh, this uh, wave uh, three, you can get this wave one, which is just as good. But it also has that clicking noise when you mute it. See. 
so people can tell when you mute and unmute okay but it's still a great microphone uh you know you're not really losing quality the sample rate and everything that it picks up same only like a couple of things are different uh you know sound wise with the elgato wave one and the elgato wave three and also the mute button being right here okay so that gets me into what i want to talk about today okay so you have a lot of these companies creating these really great microphones and the problem is with me is that they're uh condenser microphones you know they pick up everything in the room and they're great microphones you know for you know you know picking up your voice and everything they come with great software you can you can do a whole bunch of things with them really great you know microphones but if you know you don't have your room set up a certain way or you don't have your volume set up a certain way or you want a podcasting tone or like that broadcasting sound or radio sound it's going to be a little bit tricky getting that type of sound out of those particular microphones me i'm a fan of broadcasting mics if you're moving around you're going from you know hotel room or you're in your room or you're uh you're in your studio or different things you want to have a broadcasting mic i mentioned to you guys all the time to get a broadcasting mic because that way you can get the type of sound that you want out of your microphones just like how i'm getting the type of sound that i want out of this microphone broadcasting mics they you speak into the top you can't speak into the top of that microphone you gotta speak into the to, to, into the front it's front address also those elgato microphones that i recommend to you guys they're called ice cream sandwich mics they're shaped like an ice cream sandwich so they stand right up and they stand right in front of you and it's also great to get a boom arm so that way you don't have it right in front of you so you can move your hands or you can have your controller you know if you have your you know your controller with you you can you know you can you can play your game and not be bumping your mic and shit and your mic's not in the way so sometimes it's really good to get a boom arm with it and they come with these little you know these little you know quarter inch to you know microphone converters so when you want to take it off you know what i'm saying your elgato stand that it comes with you can definitely do that so those microphones are really good i know a lot of people here in the space bought those microphones thank you for purchasing those microphones they're really great but i got something different for y'all now why i tell you guys about broadcasting mics and i want to show you guys why i recommend broadcasting mics is because broadcasting mics are front addressed you speak into the top of the broadcasting mic and this particular mic has uh you know vario d technology where uh variable d technology so i can speak back here and i can get a little bit closer to it and you you can hear my sound get a little bit uh you know a little bit uh brighter okay now you have other bro uh, broadcasting mics which has what's called presence boost we'll get into that soon the reason why I tell you guys to go get uh broadcasting mics is because when you're on the side of it it noise it cancels out noise the noise from the side and then when you're behind it it cancels out noise from behind and the same thing on the side so when you come back around to the front of the microphone now you can hear so you have this side of the microphone back of the microphone side of the microphone and it comes back around so that way if you have a fan on your computer on your gaming laptop or something it's not picking up that that way when your playstation or your xbox fan cuts on and it gets really loud it doesn't pick it up okay so that's why you want to use broadcasting mics and you want to use and and they're known as dynamic mics you want to use a dynamic mic for your stream plus you sound badass and you sound like you running a radio show like i do so make sure you guys subscribe and make sure you guys like the stream so 
these are one of the more newer mics. Um, I like this microphone right here. There's another mic that this mic is identical to, but it's not the same color, and it has a different characteristic to it, which I would like to get my hands on. If you guys hit that Cash App, I can do a video on it called the RE20. This is the 320, made in China, Trump's favorite uh, country. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and, but it's just a really great mic. One of my daily drivers one of my absolute most favorite daily driving mic is the Shure SM7B. That microphone has been out since the 1960s. Really beautiful mic. Uh, Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on the SM7, which is a which is a uh, version of the microphone that we have today. So. That's the microphone that I've been telling people to get all throughout the Manosphere. Now, what type of microphone guy, microphone host would I be if I didn't have a Shure SM7B? Now, aside from the Yeti, you guys have seen this mic all the time. You guys have seen this in, in various studios, Breakfast Club, the Joe Rogan podcast, everywhere. People love the Shure SM7B. Really beautiful mic. I have one right here. I want to show you something. So, right here you have the Shure SM7B. And um, what I have on it right now is called the speech filter. Which is a pop filter that actually comes with the microphone. Helps with the plosives. Paul picks a pizza pronto. See? So you don't have to use one of these. Which is a pop filter. Paul picks up pizza pronto. See the difference? You don't get that. Uh, God damn. You don't get that popping experience. So this microphone right here is my baby. It's my daily driver microphone. I love this microphone. Really great microphone. One of my favorites, if not my favorite microphone. Now, the reason why I switch between these two mics is because they're kind of like night and day. The RE20, I'm burping and shit, that I've been talking into uh, right now is more of a bright microphone, which means that you hear more of the top end of my voice. and You don't hear too much of the bass in my voice on the bottom end because it's a more brighter microphone, but it is a dynamic broadcasting microphone. These microphones don't use uh, fan power as much as, you know, a regular condenser mic uses phantom power. So that's why a lot of people gravitate more towards, you know, the USB mics because the USB mics, you know, is it, it doesn't, you just plug it into your computer and you go. You don't have to have an interface or a mixer or something that can produce phantom power to run those microphones. Now... This microphone in particular is a tricky mic to run, as Jay's two cents, and a lot of people that think they can just go out and spend $400 and go get them a short SM7B, and they're just gonna run it out the box. You have to have certain things to run these microphones. I find that this Zoom recorder actually runs this microphone pretty good, but I like to get the full sound out of this microphone because this microphone is gain hungry which a lot of dynamic mics aren't gain hungry. So this microphone's a little bit different. Now I can boost the signal on this one by using, uh, you know, a cloud lifter or a dynamite or a fat head to basically brighten up the sound of this microphone. And then you can hear how really bright this microphone is. But if I switch to this short SM7B, you'll hear how bright it is and compared to how dark this one is which is a really good uh, broadcasting mic. You can use it for singing. You can use this microphone for everything. Crazy how a mic that was built in the 60s is used today in 2020 and 2021 for broadcasting. So the history of this mic is pretty dope. Michael Jackson recorded Thriller on it. Thriller. So it's really cool to, you know be able to use it 
uh, in today's day and age. And the older one with the humbucking coil and all that other stuff, crazy microphone. That's the actual microphone Michael Jackson used, which is the SM7. So I'm going to show you guys the difference between a bright, dynamic broadcasting mic and a more darker, dynamic broadcasting mic. Now, I do have the condenser uh, setting turned on this mic because I have right here, which substitutes a cloud lifter called the dynamite okay uh by se and uh I, I, it was se electronics uh they have something called the dynamite do not go in the airport with this because they will think it's a dynamite and the packaging that it comes in doesn't help you out any better so i'm gonna turn this on and you're gonna see the difference with how this microphone is boosted and you're gonna see how it's dark i'm gonna take this speech filter off put on the regular filter and we're gonna continue with today's tech show Make sure you guys hit the Cash App right here. That's PTV888. That's PTV888. Giving you guys and schooling you guys on some real dope shit. So let's switch over to the Shure SM7B, which is by far my favorite broadcasting mic. Also, I have a Rode Pod mic here. We'll do a shootout in the future. So let's get it. Now you guys are hearing me on the Shure SM7B and automatically you can hear that middle end and you can hear that bottom end. You hear more bass in the voice and it picks up the voice in a totally different way. So here's the SM7B and here's the RE20, 320, the RE320. So you see how more of the words are more crisp but more sharper and shrill and more brighter with this one in comparison to this microphone where you can still hear my voice and you can still make out the words, but there's not that much top end. It's more middle to bottom end. Really dope microphone, if not my favorite microphone. Now, I do love my RE320, but... I go with the Shure SM7B because it's a really great broadcasting microphone. And also, you get a really good sound out of it. Now, let me take off the speech filter where you guys can actually see the capsule and you guys can actually hear me a lot better. This speech filter, what it does is this is really good for voiceover work. And it helps with the plosives and things like that. So, really 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 good microphone and the speech filter comes with it okay so sure is my favorite my favorite uh you know uh microphone company aside from rode i got too many favorite microphone companies because i'm a microphone hoarder i have hands down the best mics in the manosphere also one of my favorite microphones is the lewitt oh, i'm not gonna pull that out is the lewitt 540 sub zero did i say it right let's see yes sir the lewitt 540 sub zero that microphone dips below human hearing very good mic we'll do a mic show on that one this is high value mics with dj kuda and this is the shore sm7b my favorite broadcasting mic of all time now maybe when i get a re20 i might i might change my mind but I, I i i doubt it now the good thing about this microphone is that when you get up on it you get something called the presence boost where your presence is more boosted in comparison to when you're talking right here you get more of that broadcasting sound in comparison to when you're talking right here and your levels go up more when you're up on the microphone it's called the presence boost that's the great thing about this microphone whereas back here you can still get a great sound, but it's not a uh, you know you know the pres the presence is not boost. Also in the back here, which I can't really show y'all, but you can see some you know some buttons right here, and you can use like a toothpick or something and flick them. You have a uh, you have a presence boost uh, button. You have a booster button for you know a base uh, you know base boost, and then you have a, a roll off. So, you know, you can you can eliminate more noise in the room with the raw sound of this microphone. Now, I do got some processing and compression and stuff 
on this microphone. So basically, if you want to hear the raw sound of this microphone, you would definitely have to uh, check out the next podcasting show that I do. Uh, not the second half of this show, but well, maybe I don't know. Uh, I'll see how I feel. But most definitely, this is my favorite microphone. Now, sure, like I said, it's been in the business for a long time. Uh, they, uh, you know, just create really good microphones and stuff. They have another company called Motive. And Motive, M-O-T-I-V, uh, they create these, uh, these, these, you know, microphones, like these really mini microphones that they use on the Shure MV88, uh, which I tell you guys to go get if you want to do, like, podcasting from your phone and you want great audio and things like that also i tell you guys to go get you know these road you know uh lavalier mics so uh you know i can show you guys the difference between well i'll turn on one of these road lavalier mics and i'll show you the difference between the road lavalier mics might as well since they're right here i'll show you guys the difference between the road lavalier mics and the short sm7b so I, t I teach you guys how to really do tech. I am a tech guy. I'm the guy that you need to talk to. So make sure you go hit the description down below. All right. So let's turn off this SM7B and let's get into today's topic before we get up out of here and before I start part two. Because if you guys have watched the show all the way up until this point, I got a gift for you. All right. So check this out. I'm gonna turn this off. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this up here. Okay. I need to, I need to, I need to get the hair off. My shit. Anyway. And now we're speaking into this lavalier mic, which is a. You know, uh, the road, uh, the road, uh, go, uh, what's it called? The road wireless go, my bad. So I have the receiver plugged in right here, which is, a, which is, a, which is the same size as this one. And we're talking into it right here. Now, what I want to do is I want to hook this lavalier mic. Let me see. Where is a good place? Shit. Hook it onto my beard and shit. Um, hmm. Let's see. I wanna. God damn it. Hold on, y'all. I'm left hand. I'm left handed anyway. Hold on. Alright, so and let me turn it up. Cause now that I want it to face my voice. Well, well fuck it. This is what we'll do. And I shouldn't have cursed because now I can't share this with kids. What we're going to do is... My oh bad, y'all. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this up a little bit so you guys can hear me clear as day. Uh, the best thing I can do, honestly, is... Uh, shit, point it upwards. No, I don't want to point it upwards. Where can I point this lavalier mic? I really wanted to put it on my... my uh, okay, I can put it right here. Duh, that's what it's for. Duh. It's a lavalier mic. Alright, so I got the Rode Lavalier mic on my uh I got it turned all the way up. Got it on my uh my lavalier. Actually, I'm doing it wrong. You wanna hide it on your persons. So this is good. Alright, so I got the Rode Lavalier mic uh, turned up on my uh, on my dial and uh, making sure that everything is good. Okay, everything sounds good. Perfect. And this is a great mic to use because if you want to have it like a shotgun mic and have it out the way, you can definitely use it. So I turned off the SM7B and you're hearing me on this Lavalier mic. Now it comes with this cat. They call it a cat which is this thing right here on the cat. Um, my cat is in here causing habit. Well, you can put it on there, and this will block the plosives. So this is basically the filter for it. 
and stuff like that. So have it hooked on. Now, sure, the maker of this microphone has released what is they thought or what which they labeled the predecessor. Like I said, they have a company called Motive. And like I said, you know, we're using an older mic for podcasting today in 2020, which is actually dope as hell. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But sure, recently just dropped a new microphone, which is said to compete with this microphone. Now me, well, we'll talk about it. That microphone is the MV7. So you have the Shure MV7 and you have the SM7B. And what would I be if I didn't have the MV7 right here to show you guys? Now, Shure likes to use green in their shit. So that's why this Shure is gone. But look, they're, they're marketing it as a podcast microphone and if you look y'all it looks like a mini sm7b it looks like a mini sm7b uh really dope microphone look at the packaging of that look at that with the green glasses and stuff mv7 and it is for the podcaster look at that you know you get your uh you know your stuff on here what it can do what it's used for and uh this microphone is not only uh we're doing an unboxing yes and we're not doing asmr this time you ain't make that up, let me stop all right so this microphone right here you know you can uh, aside from podcasting you can definitely sing on it and you can do a whole bunch of vocal stuff with it so let me show y'all this cool ass microphone now I have another microphone that was released by Rode, company that makes this lavalier, company that I'm, you know, running my audio into. And they have what's called a pod mic, but that pod mic is more for podcasting. Let me see if I have it right here where I can show y'all. Give me one second. And I do have it right here. Okay, good. But I bet a whole bunch of shit is going to start falling in my office trying to get my hands on this microphone. And this is a very heavy microphone. This right here is the Rode Pod mic. I told y'all I'm the king of microphones. Y'all going to learn one day. This right here is the Rode Pod mic. They made, and this, it's a, this is like a two plus pound mic. You got your pod mic and it's a dynamic mic. It's a hundred dollars. I tell you guys to go get these also. And you can speak into the top of it. And it's for podcast. And it has a built in pop filter. See this SM7B, it's almost called this yoke mount right here. And that helps with like the plosive, not the plosive, but like, you know, the rumbling and stuff like that. So it has like a, a, a inner, you know, shock mount built into it. That's why it looks like that. This is heavy as hell. I don't see too many things knocking it and stuff. And if y'all want to know what a shock mount is, that's the cradle that this thing is in. See, these are rubber bands and it holds the mic stable. See how it bounces? It holds the mic stable into the shock mount where you can just speak into the microphone so kind of the same thing so i started buying a whole bunch of microphones that had grills with them because i started getting into this whole grill phase i, I don't think i'm gonna grow out of it anytime soon but this is a hundred dollar dynamic mic and they sold it with the roadcaster pro because their philosophy was to get one of these you can get four of these which is a which is a deal you know and um, it sounds very similar to this SM7B. Nothing really, other than the RE20, which is a totally different mic, has been able to really keep up with the SM7B or uh, the other uh, uh, Electro Voice mic that I have, which is the RE27ND. I am the king of mics, like I said. But this is a great mic. But the thing is, is that this mic is just for podcasting. You can't go into the studio in the vocal booth and sing into this microphone. 
it's gonna sound terrible because it it, it it drops off really quickly. So this isn't a mic for singing, but this is a mic for podcasting and you can use it for gaming. Just make sure you have a very powerful, uh, you know, uh, a very powerful boom arm, you know, that can hold it because that mic is heavy as hell. This boom arm that I had this SM7B on is not that great. It bullies it, but it will do in some cases. But let's check out this MV7, y'all. So let's check this out. Really beautiful packaging. Welcome to Better Sound. Something the Manosphere don't want to do. And the reason why I call this the high value mic is because the feature on this mic that I want to show you guys that makes it different from all these other mics. Now, remember that I told you that, you know, this, you know, Elgato Wave and, uh, you know, uh, you know, the Yeti and a lot of the other USB mics, those microphones are condenser microphones, which picks up everything in the, in the, you know, in the room. This is a broadcasting mic. The reason why I really got a kick out of getting this microphone, and I'm glad that I got it before it's sold out, so make sure you guys follow what I'm telling you and hit the links in the description box and make sure you hit the Cash App also. This is beautiful. Shit come in a damn casket. And uh, you get some paperwork, which is pretty cool. This is actually pretty dope. Um, and uh, for multi, uh, it says Shure, for ultimate control, download the free Shure Plus Motive desktop app from Shure.com. This microphone, comes with software that you can run this microphone with. Isn't that awesome? A SM7B that comes with software. This is a quick start guide for the microphone. Really cool stuff right here, man. This is really cool. Now let's get into the mic. And you know, it always comes with like, you know, all kinds of documents that I don't read. It comes with this, uh, this quarter, you know, inch cable. So you can convert it from like a big, uh, stand or, you know, to a smaller stand like these boom arms right here. Always good to keep these around. Definitely got one on my SM7B. And wow. And I thought this microphone was going to be, uh, you know, uh, plasticky but it's not got some more documentation shout outs to banjo because it doesn't have a goddamn sticker so i bought a sticker and it came with a microphone here's the microphone here it's metal this thing is a tank just like this sm7b this sm7b is metal and these are the cords that it comes with. So we'll we'll set these to the side. We'll take a look at these. Pretty, pretty dope. I'm gonna show you why it comes with cords later. So, like I said, what god damn. What you really want is a broad casting microphone that rejects noise that a lot of condenser mics will pick up. And that's what I... <sighs> Let me get this correct. That's what I really enjoy about this microphone is that it's a USB condenser microphone, not even condenser, a USB broadcasting microphone. So it's gonna get rid of all the background noises and the plosives. And woo wee, look at this baby right here. Wow. 
beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Look at it. That's beautiful. And I want to show y'all some, some cool tricks that this microphone does. Now, it doesn't go all the way through, but this top does go all the way through. Okay? But check this out. If you look on the top of this microphone, you have a touch screen right here, which shows you like the volume buttons. It shows you the mute button. This is the, this is the mic mute button right there. You have the volume button, and you can switch between your headphones and, you know, the uh, monitor volume. So you can toggle it right there, and you can play with both the volume, and you can press this button right here to mute. So none of that clicking noise that the Wave has, and definitely that the Yeti has, right? The clicking noise, this. But this isn't to mute on this one. It is to mute on the wave one, but this is to change the modes. But hear that clicking? I got this lavalier mic and it picks up that clicking. Your recording picks up the clicking when you want to mute because on those condenser mics, you definitely gonna have to hit that mute button because you don't have no sound canceling act, you know, no sound canceling, uh, you know, uh, you don't have a sound, you can't cancel the sound out of the microphone unless you got your settings on your uh, on your app right. You know what I'm saying? So this is a USB microphone, but hold up. Wait, there's more. Not only is this just a USB microphone, it's also a XLR microphone. Yes. Yes, for you Manosphere guys that are afraid to upgrade your equipment because you're scared on using a, 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 a analog microphone. You have an XLR port right there. So you have a USB port right there and you have an XLR port right there and you can use it and with both, both of them plugged in. And you also have a headphone port which can run some real high quality headphones. Really dope microphone. So how you would use it is you will have it in its mount just like this, looking just like his bigger brother right here. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I've seen tutorials, I heard endless videos of people reviewing this mic. I still like the SM7B. But this shore right here is a great microphone for what you're trying to do, which is podcast. You can sing into it, and it's just a whole different mic in and of itself. When you take off this top part of this microphone, which a lot of people do when they mic it up to like drums and stuff, and some people do just to get a clear recording from it, you see the capsule right here. See? You can see the capsule, and you can see everything that picks up your voice. Whereas this one right here, when you take this off, you see a mini microphone under it. Look at that. It's a mini microphone. So you can literally use this mic, you know, without it, you know, with, with this mini microphone right here. So it, it kind of, this is kind of like a speech filter. Oh, I'm sorry, I love the smell of new equipment. I got gas. Gas is gear acquisition syndrome. So you see that? And how to get to the capsule of this microphone, you unscrew this right here. This unscrews. And this, this is heavy too. And look at that capsule. This is where the magic goes down, y'all. This is what captures your voice. This is what captures everything. It says sure on it. Sure, bud. Which is pretty cool. You know, well, that was today's tech show. Thank you guys for coming out and following. Oh, did you really think that I was going to not plug it in for like one second before we get into the other half of the tech show and, and uh, let you guys hear how it sounds just raw the way that it is. We'll do that right now. 
and then I'll show you how it sounds when you plug it into your computer and run the equipment with it. So let's plug it in and let's see how it sounds. Now, like I said, I got too much shit. This is the Zoom H8. I'm a gearhead. This is another Shure SM58, which competes with these microphones. We're going to have a huge mic shootout. I want to use this cord from it, though. So what I'm going to do is... And shout-outs to Shure. Y'all, I mean, y'all, I mean, y'all. Yes, shit. Y'all done, done got to get him out of my money. My money. Let me stop. So really great microphone. Y'all can go get these. They're 100 bucks. I am the king of microphones. Don't get it twisted. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to plug this in right here. And if I can't plug it in, I'm going to Unplug one of these microphones and plug it in. One second, y'all. Working with a monster here. If these cords don't move the hell out of my way. Hold on, y'all. Second. Un momento. Un momento. Being able to see where I can plug it is a great idea. That's what she said. Okay. So, we got it plugged in. Now, let me mess with the settings real quick. Go to microphone three. Go to microphone, go to dynamic, and let's plug this bad boy in. See what type of sound we can get out of it. And let me turn off this Rode Lavalier mic. Now we're speaking on the Shure MV7 and I want to say wow this is this is a great sound I actually like this Shure MV7 this sounds pretty awesome pretty dope and the thing is is that uh when you have it plugged in you can't really you can't these don't work unless you have it plugged in into the uh into the into the um into the into the usb port this is actually pretty dope i actually like the sound of it it sounds really good let's see uh the difference in the sound of this one in the sm7b one second so you have the mv7 and the sm7b mv7 SM7B MV7 SM7B See the difference? Let's put some compression on this MV7 real quick. Let's put some Oh, I got everything on the MV7. Let's take it off. Okay, so I took it off and this is how it sounds with no type of processing on it and that's still a pretty good sound. Um you can definitely do a lot with it. Let's take the processing off the SM7B real quick and see how that sounds. So now the processing is off on the SM7B and uh, it's like night and day. You can still hear the, 
you can still hear the, the bottom tone of it. So, SM7B, MV7. Hold on. MV7. SM7B, MV7. SM7B, MV7. You be the judge. I think the MV7 sounds pretty good. And then when you put the processing on it, it sounds a lot better. Now, I got to hold this microphone up right side because this is how it's going to sound. Also, on the app, you can be back here and it sounds like you're right here. So, really dope microphone. There is a fly in here. And it be the really, really little small fine ones. I don't know how they get through the grate on my window but i do need to close my window but anyway man damn this is terrible man this is horrible that was today's tech show fuck that fly anyway we out it's player talk radio now i need to spray my shit thank you guys it's player talk radio we out thank you for coming through come catch me on the next episode where we talk about microphones it's player talk. We out. Let's get it. MV7.